If you love sports, you may recognize part of the text of today's gospel. It's not because we hear scripture at any particular sporting event, but it's not uncommon to see a particular scripture reference in bold letters, which says John 3:16. If it ha doesn't happen at a hockey game, a football game, a basketball, baseball game, you'll see it at a golfing event. I've seen it on bumper stickers. I've seen it on the roofs of barns in different parts of the country. It's a way of proselytizing, of evangelizing, of making known this particular text, the first text or the first verse, which we read today. John 3.16 says as follows, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Jesus spoke these words to Nicodemus, a leader of the Jewish people and an expert in their law who had come to see Jesus at nighttime. Remember, at nighttime. To come to Jesus at nighttime tells us something about his fear and oftentimes what we are either ashamed of or fearful of to do in the light. In chapter three of John's gospel that we're listening to this week and we will hear to again tomorrow, Jesus and Nicodemus had a very involved and lengthy conversation that covered many themes. The kingdom of God, being born again from above, about entering your mother's womb a second time, water and the spirit, and about the wind blowing where it chooses. Today's text is the first, is the, the first part of the longest and final response that Jesus gives to Nicodemus. It speaks about learning to love the light and coming out of the darkness into the truth and the goodness. It's a dominant theme in the Gospel of John. But for me, what's most interesting is that if you follow the path of Nicodemus, you see that this is precisely the route that he took. He's asking all these questions here in the beginning of chapter three. And we find this lengthy conversation, but at the end of it, Nicodemus doesn't make a commitment to Jesus. He doesn't commit himself to Jesus nor to walk in the light. We come across him again in chapter seven of John's gospel, and he appears with the others, with other teachers of the law, and he defends Jesus before his fellow leaders. And in that chapter, when they're arguing about whether Jesus was the Christ, Nicodemus spoke up and said, does our law condemn a person without first hearing him and knowing the facts? Here was a man, Nicodemus, who was struggling with the identity of Jesus and, who Je and for Jesus is in his own way guiding him through this ongoing search to discover who Jesus really is. And finally, at the end of the gospel, he appears with Joseph out in the open, with Joseph of Arimathea, bringing 100 pounds of spice for Jesus' burial, a magnificent expression of coming out of the darkness, walking in the light, fearless, and giving obvious testimony to his discipleship with Jesus. The love of God is fundamentally expressed in sending Jesus among us. It's the measure of God's love for us and the world. Every gesture, every teaching, and every deed of Jesus manifests the love of God for each and every one of us. And faith is our way. It's welcoming the love that saves us. It's our way of acknowledging what we have received. And that's precisely what Nicodemus did. He accepted after a long journey the love of God and he walked in the light. Father Dennis McBride puts it this way. He said, perhaps we would come more readily into the light if we believed that the light we are entering is not the light of condemnation, but above all, it's walking into that area where God is present and we're standing there in a place that's overlit, exposed, and defenseless. But that often, too often, is a very dark image that we have of God. God is not waiting outside the door in the dark, ready to humiliate us with the light of truth. The purpose of the light is to enlighten us, not to blind us. God wants to see us in the light. 
After all, we are God's work created in Christ Jesus to live as God has meant us to live. Perhaps to put it a little more specific or a little bit more clearly, what I'd like to relate is a story that Father René Fumalo told a long time ago. René is an oblate missionary working in the northern part of Canada. He tells the following story of one of his experiences. He says, two winters ago, I was driving from Yellowknife to Fort Ray, and it was cold and dark. And an older man, a Dene, was with me. But the world of the Dene is a world of silence. And we drove about 10 miles. And the man finally said, you know, driving the truck is like believing in God. And for the next five or six miles, Rene went on to say, I was trying to figure out exactly what he was telling me. And I wasn't quite clear. And so finally, I turned and said, Grandpa, you said that driving the truck is like believing in God. I'm not sure that I really understand what you mean. In turn, he said, well, you started the truck and you turned the lights on and you could see ahead about 300 yards. So you could have said, I can only see 300 yards and there's 69 miles of darkness further on. So I can't go to Fort Ray. But when we started moving, the light went ahead of us. I think that's the way that God treats us. He shows us only what we need, what we need to know for today. It's like the gospel. Give us today our daily bread, and we trust in you for tomorrow. God shows us just a little bit of the way ahead of us, and if we don't move, he can't show us any further. That was the journey of Nicodemus as well. Please stand. We gather in the presence of our God and in the, this Eucharist, we remember all those people who have asked that we remember their intentions at this mass. For those people and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray in a very special way for all of the victims of war, wherever that may be, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Sri Lanka, for all the victims, we pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray in turn that we may be peacemakers in all that we do, that we can follow in the footsteps of Jesus and live the commandment to love, to love everyone, including our enemies. For that grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. God. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away our iniquity and us all from our sin. Thank you. And pray, friends, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And Lord God, by this holy exchange of gifts, you share with us your divine life. Grant that everything we do may be directed by the knowledge of your truth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. And Father all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. 